thank you for the introduction. Um, so this talk will be about concrete syntax, uh, and more specifically, we will talk about a new way of um, implementing the uh, concrete syntax of a language in a tool. Uh, just a brief uh, discussion about the context of this work. Uh, so we all know that a language consists of a syntax, and the syntax consists of the abstract syntax in which we define the concepts that our language will use, but also of a concrete syntax, and that is how we visualize uh, the concepts of the abstract syntax. On the other hand, there's also the semantics uh, with the domain and the mapping. In this uh, presentation, we will focus mostly on the concrete syntax um, and how it relates to the abstract syntax. So to do this, we will use an example of a causal block diagrams model. Um, so a causal block diagrams model is basically um, a set of blocks which have an operation like this is the uh, multiplication, addition, negation, and so on. And these are some constants. In this case, uh, this is a language um, used for mathematical operations, and this model specifically um, models uh, a mass on a spring on which gravity acts. Uh, so gravity, the spring constant, and so on, uh, the mass, and so on. Uh, and out of this model, we will get the velocity of the mass as it moves and the current y position uh, of the mass. As you can see, this uh, model is quite a good um, visualization, or quite a good language uh, to express such mathematical uh, models. Now, current tools uh, have often limitations even for such a simple language. The first such limitation is uh, multi-UI. So if in current tools you want your uh, model to be visualized exactly the same way on a desktop, a tablet, a smartphone, whatever, you will run into problems because a lot of these tools are only made either for the desktop or a tablet or whatever. If you want to run them on another machine, so uh, your desktop application on a tablet, you will have to re-implement your front end, re-implement all the rendering algorithms, basically re-implement all of the concrete syntax um, algorithms. Another limitation is that uh, you can off you're often restricted to a single format. So uh, if you do have the trace out of this um, causal block diagrams model, you would ideally like to visualize it as um, a plot of the current uh, velocity and of the extension of the spring at, this, uh, at some point in time. Now, this is a plotting visualization, but many tools currently do not support this, and they just say, ah, oh, we need uh, every element in abstract syntax has an icon, a visualization icon, and so if your abstract syntax is then just containing the tuples of the uh, time and the current value, you will get a visualization like this. Obviously, this is not as intuitive to uh, read or to understand what it's doing as this is. Um, another limitation is multi-mapping. So, for example, uh, this is the visualization I've shown you before, but this is just the visualization I prefer. As we've seen uh, in yesterday's presentation, um, the ideal icon can vary depending on the uh, user looking at the model. So, this representation, using the uh, sigma operator, for example, um, instead of the addition icon, might be more intuitive to some users. Also, the different colors and so on, might just be more intuitive, depending on your background. Um, similarly, the x, o, uh, x to the power minus 1 instead of the uh, division. It's just a different notation, but it's actually the same model in abstract syntax, just different concrete syntax visualizations. Another is layout. Uh, as you see, the leftmost uh, representation is a um, domain-specific layout. Why is this domain-specific? Because our layout is depending on the actual semantics of the model. In our case, the constants at the left always have the same value. They output a new value. They send it to the multiplication, um, yeah, to the multiplication, onto the next block, and so on. So we see that we always work left to right, and only at the end uh, do we have a feedback loop going back. To actually find out how you do this, you would have to use um, strong component algorithms, uh, topological sorting, and so on to find out the ideal uh, visualization out of this. Many frontends nowadays just say, ah, we implement some layout algorithm, but these layout algorithms are generic because they have no idea of what your model will be and what the semantics is. So they just say, ah, we implement circle layout, for example. While circle layout is nice and all, um, it's not as visual as this. So, well, it's as visual, but not as um, conceptually clear what it does. So what you would now have to do is manually um, write this, well, manually drag all the blocks to represent something like this, for example. And another limitation is uh, an end-to-end -end mapping. 
uh, meaning that for multiple, so m abstract syntax elements, you have uh, n concrete syntax elements. For example, uh, in the leftmost is just an icon representation of our abstract syntax, where we have, for example, a negation block and an addition block. In some tools uh, or some visualizations, it might be more logical to have a combined block which has a addition port and a negation port. So this block will just be the sum of everything coming in to the um, addition port and also the sum of everything coming into the negation port, but only uh, all the input in here is negated first. So depending on your domain, your background, you might prefer this notation over this notation. The problem with this notation is that this single concrete syntax element depends on multiple abstract syntax elements, so on this negation and the uh, addition. We see that the negation in this case has no explicit uh, visualization in the concrete syntax. Now, the solution to this problem, uh, as many people will tell you, is uh, you just write a plugin for your favorite IDE or your favorite tool, and it will work. The problem is with these plugins that uh, we have a lot of types of plugging stuff in. If you're uh, from Europe and you want to plug in your laptop here, you will note that you will need some kind of adapter. Even if you use the projector, you will also use some adapter. Um, so the problem is that tools offer some API to the user. And depending on which API you use, you have some access to the concrete syntax. You might not have access to the concrete syntax. Uh, you might be able to move the X and Y coordinates. You might not be able to move them. So even if you create a plugin, which is nice and modular, depending on which tool you couple it to, uh, you will have different options and also different algorithms that you uh, can use. Another problem is language dependencies. Uh, so if you have a Java tool and you need to write your plugin in Java, you will have to use Java. If you are working with a Python tool and it supports a Python plugin, you have to write in Python. So the problem here is just that even if you have a plugin which you would ideally like to uh, ship together with your uh, language and just plug it into the front end you're using. Uh, depending on which language your front end is using, you will have to use um, another plugin because you will have to re-implement it in any of these languages. Another part is just the complexity uh, because, and I'm citing an SLE paper uh, of a few years ago, it is widely agreed that developing plugins for non-trivial new languages is not for the faint heart. Uh, meaning that creating a plugin, uh, certainly if you have to code them, is not as easy as it might uh, look. Uh, certainly if you have, like, uh, for causal block diagrams, complex layout algorithms, complex um, mappings between abstract syntax and concrete syntax. So the, pro uh, the solution we propose is to take a multi-paradigm modeling approach, in which case we model everything. Now, uh, this is just a nice logo. The actual uh, multi-paradigm modeling um, credo is to model all the relevant aspects of the system at the most appropriate level of abstraction using the most appropriate um, formalism while explicitly modeling the process. Now, in this case, we will mostly focus on um, modeling this explicitly. Now, we will do this by explicitly modeling the, um, inter well, the um, model that's exchanged between the back end, where abstract syntax is manipulated, and the front end, where the um, concrete syntax is visualized. So in this case, we will uh, define our meta model of the um, rendered model, in which we define graphical elements like line element, a shape like a rectangle or an ellipse, lines, uh, even SVG or some text data. The idea is then that um, in our case, the back end will have a model, uh, well, our MM render, which we have just defined, which conforms to our meta circular level or whatever. Um, and we will also have a meta model of, of our abstract syntax. So this is our causal block diagrams language. And we also will have um, our causal block model, which we want to visualize. In the front end, we will have our platform, for example, KKinter or SVG, whatever. Uh, and this will implement the same MM render. So this will be the same, though in the front end, it does not need to be modeled explicitly. Uh, it just needs to implement this. So. It just needs to know what a rectangle is, what a, an ellipse is, and so on. Now, how will we actually do this? We will, um, for the abstract syntax model, perceptualize this to a rendered model. So this means that for each element in the abstract syntax, we will um, model what it means to visualize this. So we might say that a constant block is visualized as a circle with some text in it, and so on. Now, this rendered model, which is still completely abstract syntax because it's not visualized at the moment, uh, will be sent to the front end in one way or the other. So how this transfer actually happens, we don't really care about. Uh, this can be JSON, this can be uh, some XML representation. Just 
find a way to get it from the back end to the front end. The front end will then get this model containing instances of like, okay, draw a rectangle at this x and y position, draw some text at that x and y position, not knowing anything about the abstract syntax anymore. So then this model is rendered. Uh, so in this case, we had a rectangle, rectangle, a line from one rectangle to another rectangle. And this is just what the platform does. So the platform has no clue what the abstract syntax actually means. It just gets in some model in uh, the MM render and visualizes it. The front end can then do some abstract syntax operations directly on the model um, we have in the back end. So for example, if it knows that this um, rectangle represents some abstract syntax element in the front end, we can, for example, remove this directly with an abstract syntax operation. This is uh, kind of a shortcut because what we would ideally like uh, is that changes in the front end only happen on the M render, so on the model, uh, the rendered model. We would, for example, if we remove this rectangle, we only recognize this removal in, for example, the Kinter or a platform, and we remove the element from the rendered model as recognition. We then again transfer the change to the back end, where it this change is comprehended. So we see, okay, we have removed this rectangle. What does this actually mean in abstract syntax that we remove this rectangle? We would use some traceability links, for example, to find out that removing this rectangle actually removes a causal block uh, diagrams element, so a specific block in abstract syntax. Now, all the user therefore has to do is implement the perceptualize, render, recognize, and comprehend uh, activities. Now, these activities, how are they implemented? That's also a nice um, thing to ask. Well, these activities can be implemented whatever way you like. So it can be, for example, a model transformation, where you say, if I find a constant block, and the constant block has no traceability link to a previously defined group, then generate a new group with some text in it and an ellipse uh, for that constant, for example. Um, we could also use some kind of algorithm. This uh, is a strongly connected component algorithm, which is preferably not expressed with model transformations, but is more ideally expressed uh, using some kind of algorithm, uh, so a more imperative algorithm. Another solution is to use uh, an external constraint solving tool, like Cassowary in this case. Um, and all of these three things can cooperate together, like mapping a constant uh, to its representation looks really nice in model transformations, Doing strongly connected component algorithm really looks nice as an algorithm written like this. And some constraint solving, we really don't want to do this ourselves. So we can have all these three different kinds of activities. Now, if we apply this to uh, CBDs, we have, for example, that our abstract syntax model has, in this case, uh, an abstract syntax representation for a constant with value 1. So we first do the perceptualization, in which case we create our M render, so our rendered model where we have a group with some traceability link to that constant, an ellipse, and some text. Now, this conforms to our MM render uh, from before, and we see that we define the X and Y coordinates, the line width, the color, the background color, width, height, and so on. So this model, and only this model, the M render, we transfer, for example, uh, through JSON serialization, to our front end, and then the front end visualizes this with tkinter. Uh, so in tkinter, it just sees, okay, this ellipse is a tkinter call create underscore ellipse with these and these and these parameters, so it generates this. If we then do a uh, change in tkinter, where we alter, for example, the text value of 1 to 2, we can recognize this change as a change to this text value, where the text is no longer 1, but text 2. So this is recognition. This is, again, transferred to the back end through JSON serialization, for example, where we again see that now our text has changed to 2 also. And using these traceability links, which we have defined before, we can also comprehend uh, this change and actually adapt the abstract syntax value uh, of the constant to 2. Now, how does this address uh, the limitations we have previously seen? Well, the multi-UI, um, we just have the same M render, so we have done all the perceptualization and all the comprehension, so basically the difficult part uh, is done at the back end. So we just say we have a rectangle, and then we send it to a front end, so your UI, and we just say draw a rectangle. How to draw this rectangle is purely dependent on your platform. Uh, so yeah, we can't do that in the back end. That needs to be the front end. Now, if you have uh, the, sa the same M render for multiple front ends, how these front ends implemented, you don't care. You just say, I want my rectangle over there. 
So the multi-format, we do that by defining multiple uh, MM renders. So in this case, we have a graph, a graph MM render, so a graphical representation like this. But we can also have a plot MM render, uh, which looks like this. They will have different concepts, and the perceptualization will also just be a different uh, perceptualization. Again, everything happens in the back end, and it just sends to the front end what it needs to do, like draw um, a round angle over there, or here, draw a plot with values uh, at x0, this value at x1, that value, and so on. Uh, for multi-mapping, that's uh, quite easy. We just have multiple perceptualizations, but going to different models with the same MM render. And then we can have these uh, multiple visualizations, send them to the front end, and then again, it will just render it as usual. Layout is exactly the same. We can define multiple layout algorithms uh, in the back end, in the perceptualization phase. And the nice thing about this is that it's the back end which does all the layout. And the back end is completely aware of all the semantics and all of the uh, abstract syntax limitations of the um, language we're uh, visualizing. The m to n mapping is uh, just a result of using, for example, model transformations, where you can uh, look at elements of the abstract syntax, so the block, negator, adder, and so on but also at elements of the concrete syntax where we say, okay, if you find this pattern in concrete syntax, rewrite it, uh, for example, by changing this link to that link. Now, in conclusion, um, we have seen that there are some limitations in existing tools uh, and that they are not easily solved by using plugins. They can be solved by plugins. I'm not claiming that we are doing stuff that would be previ previously impossible, but it might be more appropriate to do it uh, our way. Our way was then um, to explicitly model the MM render, so the uh, exchange format between uh, the back end and the front end, and doing all the visualization part, or well, the uh, perceptualization at least, in the back end where we have all domain specific information. Then uh, some details were discussed about how this mapping was actually done. So we could do this uh, with model transformations with some kind of algorithm. And we also had, in this case, a visualization. Um, well, in this case, an MM render for graphical uh, representations. This MM render does not really need to be specific to visualization. It can just as well be sonification. So if our MM render would be uh, would have concepts of like uh, musical notes, for example, we would just as well be able to map it to these musical notes, send this to a front end, and if the front end understands what it means to render a, uh, a musical note, it will work fine. And finally, uh, we apply this to CBDs uh, with an example where I've shown uh, the process rather quickly um, and on how to render a simple uh, constant element in the abstract syntax, uh, how this is transferred, and how this is manipulated in the front end, and how we went back to the uh, back end. So that was my presentation. If there are any questions.